Hello everyone, Charmant Sin here. Um, so today I'm going to do a little discussion about the differences between network security and application security. Um, I've had some people um, ask um, the differences and also um, you know some of the characteristics between the two because they are in fact different. Um, so the first misconception about um, network security slash application security is when a organization or uh, an individual deploys a firewall um, and we have all of our policies and stuff like that, that um, there's no other ways in because we have a firewall and all these IPSs, IDSs and all these great things. However, that's not the case. Um, when you're securing the network, network security, the name indicates that we're securing the network. So um, what's that mean? First thing would be, you know, we're securing our firewalls, or our switches, uh, things like things like that, making sure that certain networks can't talk to each other, like your internal corporate or internal LAN network shouldn't directly be able to talk to the um, to the outside world without going through a firewall or some sort of policy engine. Now, um, what happens uh, is when you forward, let's say a port, say you're hosting a, a web server. So you have a web server, you have your, your corporate network, your LAN network, and you have a server sitting on this, on this network. And you've port forwarded, I don't know, port 80 and port 443. So you have a firewall that will, one, say, okay, uh, only allow traffic destined to port 80 and 443. Everything else gets dropped. Okay. So any packet that comes into the network that hits that particular um, rule, so, you know, uh, to a destination port of 80 or 443 will be allowed. Everything else will be denied. So that's a form of network security. We're protecting the network. However, say there's, an, there's a vulnerability in Apache or uh, Microsoft's uh, IIS. So the packet comes in, the firewall processed the traffic, allowed the traffic because it was destined to a legitimate source. However, the payload in that, the layer seven payload, and layer uh, and, and everything above layer three slash layer four um, is now uh, way above the firewall. The firewall um, usually will operate at layers three slash layer four, but when I'm doing something like an SQL injection, or I am malforming packets and stuff like that, um, you know by putting in certain payloads that will, ex, you know, um, uh, say circumvent uh, an authentication type uh, or, uh, you know, do a file inclusion, something kind of like a PHP attack, the firewall will not be able to block those things because it's way above what, what it is. That's why, for instance, you'll have a web application firewall. Uh, like Moth Security uh, is an example of that. So what that does is that there's yet another firewall. And at that point, we're not allowing ports and IPs and stuff like that. We're saying, um, you know, this application can only talk to this resource on, on that file, stuff like that, on the application layer. Okay. Uh, it's very important because most of the attacks that you're seeing now you know, SQL injections and, and database dumps all over the place and stuff are happening on the application layer. We've been very good now um, at protecting our, um, the, we're very good at protecting our networks with firewalls and IPSs and stuff like that. However, the application is where there's a massive issue right now. So for example, um, when there was the heart bleed uh, or shell shock uh, vulnerabilities, um, we'll go over to heart bleed for a second. No firewall, IPS, IDS, any of that could have helped because there was a bug in the application itself. Legitimate traffic was coming in 
and leaving. However, due to the fact, and I believe the for the heart re, the heart bleed uh, vulnerability, was that there was a reads check that was not put in in the source code. And that allowed uh, the attacker to read certain information in from memory. Um, and so this is where the main focus of security now uh, should be. Because if you are uh, even a half competent uh, security professional, um, you're already doing a pretty good job. Uh, anyways, you know, like not allowing weak passwords on your firewalls, which... Uh, firewalls, router switches, all those network devices, which unfortunately, if you look, Symantec just released, um, I'll, post, I'll post in the description, they just released a, um, a report about the top 10 passwords, and I'm still blown away. Year after year, we're seeing huge numbers of passwords, QWERTY, uh, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 8. Um, that blows my mind. We have been working, even me personally, have been working very hard to educate everyone about not using these weak passwords. And yet, somehow, year after year, you know, QWERTY, 123, all these passwords since like the mid-80s are still making the list. So, um, you know, this is, this is an issue. Firewalls, IPS, IDS will not help at all. And for something like a weak password, you have a weak password on a database, and you know if let me tell you if you're if you have a username and password of admin and admin for your MySQL root user, chances are you're not sitting there making policies to allow only certain subnets going in, um, and if you are, then the question would be why would you make something so important so weak right uh so that that's the massive difference between the network security and application security that's why most of my work at, and and you'll see it in most of the videos that are up online even my videos we focus mostly on the application you know um uh, making sure that certain certain devices, uh, sorry, certain applications can't access certain other resources and stuff like that, um, because you know, there the the more applications you have in your infrastructure, uh, the more chances of one of those applications having a bug, um, and so you don't add as many devices as you do applications. So, for instance, if I have a checkpoint firewall, Cisco switches, um, you know, my hardware environment doesn't dynamically change as much as applications. Applications get updated daily sometimes or, or weekly. Um, uh, not so much daily, actually, I should take that back. But at least, uh, you know, once a week or even if not, at least a month, there's constantly, every time there's an update, even a patch, even a patch to fix a hole can open up another hole. Um, and we've seen it before, and we'll see it again. Um, you know, plugins, the flash vulnerability that just happened now, another zero day where, um, you know, they uh, they can take over your machine. And flash is notorious for, for security vulnerabilities. It's part of the reason why they've been trying to kill it for so long. Um, and so Flash is a per perfect example. The amount of issues that are happening with that plugin, um, it's just any day now when we're going to have someone that has a good enough campaign that's going to take over hundreds and thousands of machines. And, and, uh, and this is the, the state of security at the moment. So if you have any questions, comments about this video or any one of my videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Sorry for the lighting, um, but I'm going to fix that soon. Uh, you can always email me. I'm always available at sean at seanmancini.com. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.